Kevin Duffy here. Welcome to our fourth video in the series. We're going to show how we installed this cabinet. We made all the doors, but we didn't show how to make those. And support our channel and subscribe, and I'll show how to, later on how to make doors like this. And sourcing your hardware, getting the right hardware for the for your project. I'm here with the cabinets. The bottom cabinets are going to be installed for the home theater. Uh, as you can see, they're only sitting on the base, and you'll hear a lot in my videos about ladder base, ladder bases, and it's like, what ladder base? What the guy's talking about? It, the base being separate and the cabinet sitting on top of it, you'll start to realize why it has so many advantages, especially this. Now, you're seeing the cabinets here and you're saying to yourself, well, gee, I, I see all the other cabinets and they just have a little piece of wood on top. And they don't have little brackets. And how come these have uh, full tops? In this case, we're going to need it for the strength. But we do all our cabinets like this. I have not figured out why you put little strips across on top. Uh, I think it was back in the old days. Uh, you know, they didn't have wood. But what it's come down to is really everybody's cutting corners. They're saying, um, I got a factory and I'm making... 1,000 cabinets a week, and if I use, I don't know, uh, 100 sheets less that week, or 200, whatever the number will be, that's a lot of money. So that's part of the reason. It's just a lot of greed. On us, they're all screwed on top. They're all dadoed. We also have full backs. And you can see right there, full three quarter backs. The beauty of that is that you can't, you, it keeps your cabinet totally square and it's the strength of the cabinet. I, I've been seeing online a, a, a lot of stuff and it's like, wow, they put a lot of effort. They're using pocket holes, this and that. We're just screwing straight into the plywood. You know, we, we glue everything because we have dado construction. You can make these with butt joints and they'll, they'll be just as strong. All right, and so as you can see, that's the base that will be going installed. That's like crazy. Now I'm putting the cabinet back. And you can see being on a relatively straight surface, just sitting here. They're, they're almost perfect. Like, you know, you gotta get a little gap there if I screw it there. But everything's sitting beautifully like this. So I'll s screw them in. And right now we're gonna install all the uh, drawers and then go for delivery. And I can't stress enough about ladder bases. Um, I mean, you've heard about it or haven't heard about it. And you have regular cabinets that have a kit plate. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'd be honest with you, I haven't really installed them before because I've been working so long on my own. I just, I just these are my bases and it's the way I make it. But with, with those other kick plates, you get a lot of sag in the middle of the cabinets. And especially if you're using particle board, I think it's, it's, it's horrible. And the other thing is, like, how do you shim it properly? Like, like right here, like, I'm not, I don't have a laser level, like, I wouldn't put it this low anyways. It wouldn't, it wouldn't help me coming out forward because out forward is very important because most houses over time will seat down a bit. In this, in this case, you know, they'll, they'll just sag. It's just natural. On this case, we have styrofoam back here. They have a four foot wall, retaining wall. Well, I shouldn't say retaining. Uh, it, it, is, it is going on the other side to save the house. We're on the edge of a cliff. So it's, it's pretty incredible the way they made it. It's about over almost 10 feet all the way down. So I didn't put drywall, I, I put, we put this here to stop any moisture. And what I was afraid of putting it back here with all the moisture and everything else, that the drywall was just gonna turn into uh, sawdust because it would be, you know, it'd be a different temperature back there or just turn into mush. So, if you see that and you get comments about, well, what happens if, if there's a fire and this goes here? By the time the cabinets burn or the other thing burned, if you're not out of the house, you're done for anyway. So uh, now I got my shims here and I'm going to set this up. 
Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and keep it equal here. But I made it, I always make it a little smaller, so if I'm a little off, I'm not at the edge. So I have eight inches there. And I have seven. So I'm gonna go seven and a half. Seven and five eighths. Why you make it smaller is this reason. Sometimes you're, you know, you can be a little off. You go exact, you're gonna get burned on this. Because I, I ask me how I know this. I've had it before happen, and we end up having to cut this base out on the dishwasher. It was our, our cabinet was right about there, and then we end up having to cut the section out. What a nightmare! Trying to get in. See, I got my other level here. I got to come up about here. It's all. It's actually quite quite a bit. It's about three quarters of an inch. So I don't want to put any stress. So I'm going to go here, nice and gentle, get that level. But my back is the high point is right here. So I want to come up a little here on these two corners. There, and I have that dead level, and I have that dead level. All right, now I'm putting a shim under each cross piece. And you know, get the level there and being careful uh, not to twist it before I start screwing it in. I have a, a block in between there. I pulled it out an inch and a half in the back there. And it was really just so I get more support for my cabinets. Uh, th the reason is speakers will be sitting on top of the cabinets. And I have drawers. I really want my cab like cabinets to be solid so when I pull out the drawer there'll be no vibration whatsoever also with the speakers being on top I don't want any movement whatsoever I, wa I want this to really be rock solid so when you know the sounds coming out of those speaker cabinets uh, there's going to be no vibration or any resonating or any nonsense like that so um, I really take my time but the other thing that's what's really important is on the right hand side uh the fireplace that it's dead level like it's no point in me making that level if my fireplace isn't level because everything's going to be v'd after so even if you if i was a little off let's say a fireplace was a little off i could you know run a square and maybe not make it level you know there's there's that issue that option too if you run into a problem or you run into a place that's so crooked uh, I've done that before um, I just you know put in cabinets to make it look straight to the room but here there's really no issue the only headache is the left on the wall it's it's out about an eighth of an inch and you'll see later it comes up and I can't I can only hide hide it so much eh? um, that's a big thing with stuff like this uh, if rooms are crooked uh, all bets are off. There's, you know, just going to be different ways, and th that's it. Just, you know, um, you know, make sure it's in there tight, and after that, you're laughing. Alright, we skipped a few steps. I don't think you really want to see us carrying cabinets in today. Today, The cabinets are only sitting here. I don't have anything screwed. And it's a little critical. I allowed three quarters of an inch filler. I want, to, I want a little trim here for my doors. I want to have my doors uh, boxed in. Now, when we talked about before how being level is important, I only have this sitting here, and if you you know I want to bring in the camera and you can take a look at how level that is. It's not staged. I don't have any shims or anything, and you you know you can see there. So it, it it's I can't stress enough, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get be like old dude on a rant, but hands down this is the easiest way. I have my other cabinets, the TV units going in the middle here. 
I have in my other cabinets one bright, which will also carry um, the old PlayStations, all Nintendos, everything else going to go in that cabinet. This is where all the, the heavy duty electronics is going here. By far, it's one of the most complicated I've ever done. You can see all the wiring. We, we got the 20 gauge and we're running directly. Nothing is being circuited. Everything has its own uh, power source so they won't be split off. So what I'm gonna do now is I got this flush. One thing I learned a long time ago, don't go and make these things exact. Like when you're trying to meet for this, where this is, I've already made this in the shop. This has to be exact. This can be my piece that comes up here. So I left those spacers on perfect. I, I calculated about three quarters of an inch. And you can see I'm pretty close. I might be five eighths, but sometimes you can be 16th off here or 16th off there. And if I try to go exact with this, I'm gonna get burnt on install. I know I will, because I've, I've had that happen before and you'll end up cutting a cabinet and putting a little spacer there it doesn't really make a big deal. Now I've gone here, I'm using one and a half inch like particle board screws. So I'm gonna go here, screw it up under the speaker. I'm sc screwing it up underneath uh, to the speaker. Um, the speakers I made uh, one inch um, Baltic birch and but the cabinets I did them not exact length of the speaker on purpose there was two reasons why um, I wasn't sure with the molding when I was doing it but the other reason is when I get the drawer faces on there I use solid wood for the drawer faces and a lot of times sometimes when you sand or road or everything else it's hard to get all those drawer faces exactly flush with it um, you know, that's why a lot of other companies, they use particle board, but um, I wanted real wood. So I, I gave myself an out, and I always use that word out, meaning I, I, I wanted to look inlay, and so I opted to put a piece in between. Let's see how it turns out on the next one when we start putting that piece in. Okay, so I have my spacers. I was lucky enough, I had one inch Baltic birch. And you can see this bad boy, why I like it. Now, it will add like a lot of strength for my wood here, for my plywood. Also, keep it straight. So I'm gonna keep it back. Like I got a little round though. We're gonna keep back about a good quarter of an inch. I haven't decided on my filler pieces yet. I wanna let me do inlay, but it'll depend. Sometimes things get a little crooked. And like I discussed before, I always have, I always leave ways out, you know, like it, it's one of those things. The only thing I'm not a fan of with these screws is starting them. They don't seem to dig in right away. I, I started, I bought the Craig and they sit nice on the drill. And as you push a bit, for whatever reason, they don't dig in so nicely. I've already made like a little, you know? Alright, so there's one. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put three screws in there. You know? um, and I flush at the bottom. It was a little tricky uh, getting that lined up. In retrospect, maybe I, I should have had my quick clamp doing it there, but it was kind of in the way and I wanted to move it a little bit. Um, I was a little pissed off with the Craig screws. First time I used them for installing, it's because they have a little pilot there and they're dull and they don't really get into the wood. So you almost got to use two hands to get it started. Um, that's about my only little beef. He's back. All right, now the uh, exciting part, like, like where you hold your breath and you make sure that you don't do any mistakes. And we pre-wired the boxes in the shop. So everything's ready to, to hook up. All the wiring is here. We got dedicated for our amps, like I said before. We got one, two, three. 
and I got a fourth fourth one. Now, what I did here for the airflow, uh, these fans uh, hopefully are fantastic. If we do get hot in here with the amp, like I'm not 100% sure how well the airflow will do. Uh, we got the Denon receiver that's going here. That weighs about 35 pounds. Uh, we got a, a surprise. We'll show the other amp here. The other amp weighs 100 pounds. Ouch. So you can see why, you know, we're making things super strong. I made this really like overkill because when you're cutting out here, you're going to lose a lot of strength. So I have the one inch plywood, Baltic birch, and we got great airflow for the computer. We have our networking here which will have its own rotor, which will have its own Wi-Fi, which will, won't, it'll be, it, it won't be split from the house. We'll take it directly to our rotor here. Everything else for the TV, computer, everything else is going to be hardwired with 6, with six cat. Uh, we, I think we thought of everything. Uh, the plugs will stick out. So obviously this could take all day. Like, you know, like with the main amps going down here, so... You know, we have all these plugs to put in, so it's yes, it's going to be a long day. Um, I don't see any other problems as we get closer to here. I'm seven inches, I'm seven inches. That's it. I got up the mold, my molding is six, and the balance that goes under here is, is one inch, so let's equal seven inches. I can cut that molding a bit. Um, if you see on top, the only thing with, I used 2x4s, I wanted the strength, but the only thing with like 2x4s I discussed before is a lot of times when they're left around, they're a little wavy, eh? But I, I couldn't, I couldn't make this strong enough, in my opinion, for, um, in plywood. So the last few hours wiring everything, and you can see, we're trying to keep it like super clean. Uh, one of the requests... Uh, from the owner, they didn't want to see wires at all, so I had to be really super clean. So we're using these jacks here. They're pretty cool. They they go, they go in on the inside, like they go back around like this, and they slip in. So they're very cool. Then they're little jacks that will go in here. So, so far, I have my, those are my rear speakers. Those are my ceiling speakers. I got my HDMI in here. I have my fan on. I'm hoping that fan's powerful enough. If not, I'll have to put a fan on top of the amps. And we got our network going inside. Uh, we, get, we also have four direct lines of electricity <laughs> what we have here is a dedicated 20 amp 20 amp that's for the two amps you can't see it on the other side I have another dedicated one for the computer and I have another one here up, up here will all be low voltage stuff like this is the amp for the base kicker yeah yeah we put base kickers and the HDMI's go here we put one here, so they're sitting at the couch. Like right down here, like we put one HDMI down here, we put a network, and we put one in behind the bar down there. So if you're sitting there with the laptop and you just want to put it on or watch a video, show pictures, I know you could do direct chrome or whatever, but sometimes it's it's a little nice. So I'll probably be, these, these, they work pretty good. You know, you gotta be careful with the speaker wire. Like it's, you can't go too deep with a knife. I don't have a wire splitter. Sure, I could have picked one up at Princess Auto or something. You know, but it's a hard casing. And this one is a little thicker. And I go right about here. The only, the only advice I would give somebody is just make sure, go about a, a, a touch over an inch. Don't go too much because you don't want you don't want it to be touching these terminals. So 
So that's about touch touch over an inch. Now I'll go another one. Like I know I'm a cabinet maker. I don't I don't like I don't do really that much electricity, so I kinda or low voltage speakers or things like that. I am doing it in this case. And I do love the marriage of cabinetry and woodworking. What does that mean? That means having a gazillion wires and then looking inside the cabinet and not seeing anything. You know, and this will all be behind. These cabinets will all be removable so that if, if something, um, you know, happens, an upgrade or whatever. But I, th I think they covered their bases here. We also put 8K video cable, but 8K is nowhere near being mainstream. I mean, they haven't even caught up with 4K yet, and it's been, what, a few years? I mean, how many channels are really even on 4K right now? Just some sports. So, you know, they got their got their bases covered, I think. Anyways, um, I saw on one of them HDMI cable and fiber optics. And I was like, what? Fiber optics? It's a $100 cable or $200 cable. I mean, we're not there yet. Hi, right, I'm back. You can see there's a lot of progress and we're really uh, excited for what's happening. And what I said in the other video was that I was really nervous because I don't do a lot of light balance, especially wood like this. Usually somebody would just put a frame in and drywall and call it a day, not going around putting wood. And you can see we, we have our header piece. The header was designed for two reasons. Uh, kind of pick up on the fireplace. I wanted that modern vibe. Two, I, I wanted something a little bigger, a little beefier, so when a 75-inch TV goes in here, it doesn't look like it's going to take over the room, you know? And so I'm hoping to achieve that. Did, I used two-inch thick. I know it's mahogany, two-inch. I had three pieces. This is a perfect uh, piece to do it. Uh, was I a little overkill? Could I have done it in three-quarter? Yeah, I could have maybe done it in three-quarter, and put another piece underneath. But then I think that this is striking. Um, you can see what I was worried about on the header was having a gap or any waves. Like, like I'm not gonna put molding on this. So I, I wanted, I just got a gentle round over on top. Um, I'm making uh, L brackets and I use that word a lot. Uh, that's how I screwed in the molding. So they're just basically two pieces of wood put together and now I got to once I get the L then I can take this and then screw it into the molding in behind and I, I go I like gluing them together I, I don't really want something like this to come loose um, so it makes life a lot easier and a lot cleaner like you know um, I'm pointing out there you could you could see I'm going to take that molding down, and I just did. And now I'm going to take my L bracket, screw it in behind. You won't see any of the screws. And there's really, uh, that's about it. I've, I've done it like this for years. And, you know, I'm, I'm using the Craig screws so that I don't have to uh, pre drill. You know, I'm going into an uh, inch and a half thick mahogany, so I, I have a lot of play there. Uh, the screws I would use it would only be an inch and a half in in length. I don't really. Need, I just need enough of a bite to grab in there. After that glue kicks in, those uh, brackets are not going to move. But what's great about that bracket now, I can really pull down my molding and keep it tight. And I I did the exact same thing for the side, and I didn't bury the screws. So like I said, if I have to get in access in behind there, I can. And I in this case, I had to use two of them. And I left a little overhang on the other side, so when my side piece goes in, it has something to bite up on and kind of keep it straight. Um, Uh, I don't know if I'm back or I'm going to edit myself in being back. It, it's been a couple hours up to this point to get everything ready. Obviously, you're a little nervous about, you know, cutting something like this. Even though, you know, yes, I've done a lot of cuts in my day, but 
I don't want to make a mistake. It's, it would take a long time to get a piece like this ready if I screwed up. So we have the top piece in all the way across. You can see here there's about a quarter inch gap. That was so that was put on purpose because I, what I really wanted was this to be tight. My molding. This is critical right here. Now we left that healthy, almost three quarters of an inch reveal, which screws me up a bit. I'm gonna have to cover this on the inside because I, I was more or less gonna go flush by the side. So I'll, I'll have to put a little piece of veneer right across there just to make it look a little clean, you know? Because it's too bad about the screws. Or I might just plug up the screws, I don't know yet. Now, with that said, like what I'll do now is I'll, I'll tack three screws in there. I won't torque them, not yet, just to make sure I'm okay, keep it moving. Then I'm gonna take this and install this like this. I'll go under. And then I'll screw that in. You can see here, I'm, I'm almost flush here. I'll get the level on it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I got soft soles, so you're cringing there. And you can see here, I got a little bit of a V right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that's that's why I'm not torquing this in when I when I screw it. I might have to pull out. I can see where my V is right here. So I might have to go in behind here and just pull it out so slightly. So these things can be a little tricky to get that really nice reveal. But I am liking the three quarter reveal. It, it does look nice. And the screws are not going to be buried. Like these screws are all here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I have one inch plywood here, three quarter inch plywood here. I have almost two inches of plywood. Now, this is not going to move with my TV. But at the same time, I made this all removable because it's so important that there, there could be electrical problems in behind, anything else. If you take this out, you can work here all day long. You'll be able to get everything. Same thing with the fireplace mantle when we get that in, in screwed. There'll be just the glass, you'll be able to pull it out and then, then basically just unscrew the uh, mantle. And the same, same deal down here. I'll start with the wall side first, because I, I got a little flex on that side, about a sixteenth of an inch. But so far, so good. And I, I can show you, like when it's covered, like how important it is. Like here, if I ever have to get at the fence, I would, all I would have to do is let those screws out, pull it out, and you could easily get at anything in behind. <laughs> so that was part of the reason why I left it like uh, like I left a full six inch molding and to give it the look. Now you see the look with the fireplace, you know? But now what I'm gonna have to do, when I get this done, I'm gonna have to put, I'm gonna put a little strip of concrete here and cover this gap that's gonna be on the side. It's gonna be about an inch and a half, so I'm gonna, I gotta build that up now. Only because I, I stole three three extra inches so it kind of pushed everything out. I think the next time, I'll, I'll make sure I do it. I'll leave a full 25 inches. I was calculating at 22 inches, but it, it's it's much nicer to cabinet 22. So we're winding down. We're, we're happy with the fit. Like it's very straight. There's really no gaps. Just a little round over that I put there on top. I left, I did that on purpose though. And I'm glad I did. Uh, we didn't film the install of the uh, fireplace, but it was pretty simple. You know, basically just jam it up. Or I shouldn't use that word. And put, we put screws in on the side. The glass was an antique heirloom that they've had for a long time. It meant a lot to them. So this was custom made to fit the stained glass. Um, we just put a simple little trim here with pin nails. When I say pin nails little baby nails that you could just pop pop it off, have access here. The only thing that didn't work out too well was the diffuser. We used uh, a plastic one. We're not happy about that. We'll have to get a, a better one that shows the light and looks a little whiter. 
if they have they have fans here that blow out the hot air for the uh, propane. I'm going to install this, and this will be the fan here. I think I'll put a black grill in behind here, um, and we'll we'll see what kind of, uh, the airflow is pretty decent. I've run it already. Um, I didn't block too much because they are. As long as I equal this, whatever this opening of this fan is, and I have enough slots here for the air to come in, I should be okay. But you'd have to run this really in the uh, winter time, see how it is, or I'd have to cut these out and just leave a black grill. But I like the wood so much better. Uh, it was Art Deco inspired, meaning uh, it was my take on it. Um, when I feel uh, as a cabinet maker, uh, I think now our work is just getting mundane. We're not getting very creative. And it's just creative. I don't know. It's creative to me. But we're, we're not expressing ourselves anymore. We're just being copycats. And I don't mean to put anything down. I've, God knows I've done uh, enough white kitchens in my day. But uh, here's my take. Uh, it all started with the TV. That was my design. Um, okay, what am I going to put here? I made it that I could put an 80-inch TV. Is it pretty good? Uh, I looked at projection, we and I've always followed uh, projection, but I didn't do it because of having a dark room. The number one criteria was having a bright room. That You know, there's two people involved in these things, and not to be sexist, I know the guys are like, oh yeah, give me the amps, give me the power, and I'll watch a football game. Um, but in this case, it was a dual purpose room. It's for, you know, uh, somebody just to hang out, do exercise, have a sleepover. Um, really, uh, you know, listening to two different opinions. Sometimes people could be there, but meeting in the middle. Um, as you can see, they got Android TV, which is my opinion, hands down the easiest operating system to get with these Android TV. It's all 4K. The picture is quite stunning. Um, we're going to do another video on the equipment and how we chose it. In this case, it was $8,000 budget and I had to perform miracles. Inside here is all the equipment. I tried to get pretty neat, but there was a few adjustments here and there on the Denon, didn't work as advertised on a couple of things. And that, that's another issue there with Denon that we'll explain and you know, hopefully nobody else falls into it. Uh, it ended up super clean. The temperature loosely is, um, we got two fans going here, blowing this way. We got two fans on top sucking out. Plus I got these, these weren't that expensive to put on top of the Denon's. And we got low, medium and high. But they're also connected to this, they're on their own, they're not connected to the sensor with these because you can only run six fans at the same time. So we'll discuss the uh, equipment later. Uh, super quiet, you don't even know it's there. Uh, this was one of my biggest projects and also one of my biggest challenges. Um, it totally designed everything, meaning wallpaper, color, everything. Uh, carpeting uh, was our suggestion, uh, color was our suggestion. So thank you for watching the YouTube video and any comments, uh, please feel free to write them and I'll answer any questions. Also, please subscribe. We need all the subscribers we can get. Thank you. Bye.